Well, apparently I just filmed this whole video and the audio did not pick it up. So we are going to redo this video. We're going to keep it short, sweet, straight to the point. Give you guys the info that you need to know. First and foremost, I will tell you guys right off the bat, there is some massive short positions that are being initiated on SoFi stock. And there is a reason for this the overall economy right now is not doing so hot the headlines that we are getting are not looking so good but what i see actually happening are hedge funds including even the insiders which are obviously not hedge funds but basically everyone is going very bullish for the long term aka buying shares but a lot of massive put positions as well to hedge out some of that potential downside so i think all in all, this is really a net positive and could make for some very explosive moves over the short and midterm future. I want to talk about the big catalyst coming out on Friday, how that could affect tomorrow. You also do have the ECB that has their rate hike decision coming tomorrow. That could also affect the markets in the morning as well. So I want to give you guys all of this information, things that will affect SoFi stock, what's affecting the economy, what people are saying, and just really what you guys need to know. So if you guys find value out of this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for tuning in and let's Let's get straight to it. So first and foremost, really, what is affecting the economy uh, so much and, and what's really affecting investor sentiment as of right now and why the markets were down about 1% today? It really comes down to the bond market and the oil market. So the oil market was up uh, 2 to 3% today. Brent crude currently sitting at about $124 a barrel. Oil sitting at $122 a barrel. If you guys have not seen the, the gas pump lately, it's not looking so good no matter what state you're in. My home state of Michigan, you were over $5 a gallon. We're at historic levels we have never been at before. So that's a big problem. And that is the single biggest factor that is negatively affecting the economy as of right now. Forget the Fed raising rates, forget all of that. What is really hurting the economy, price of energy, the price of food, things the Federal Reserve cannot do anything about. That's that bad inflation that nobody can really do anything about. It's geopolitical problems that are causing it. Uh, or you could say the government, their lack of um, you know, problem solving, right? Just say the damn Keystone Pipeline and it would drop the price of oil 10% the next day. Just say you're going to open it or subsidize drilling, right? But that's not happening. So that's really the biggest thing that is affecting overall market sentiment in my personal opinion. And that's what is affecting the market sentiment around potentially a recession and the Fed. And really the bond market is very important as well because you have seen a very historic rally in the bonds, something we have not seen in a very long time. The US 10 year treasury yield now trading over 3% again. We had another big day today. We jumped about 0.05% on bond yields after coming down uh, yesterday. And that's why we did see a slightly bullish day as of yesterday. Now, definitely not so much so so that's affecting your lending rates that's killing demand overall and when you see articles like this coming out on cnbc mortgage demand falls to the lowest level in 22 years amid rising rates and slowing home sales that is definitely affecting overall uh investor sentiment and that is not good but i will say price of oil price of food that is pushing us into a 100 percent chance of a recession there's no way around it the question is how aggressive will the fed have to raise when the recession starts and then how soon are they able to accommodate the markets because you know when when you're thinking about uh you know what happens leading into a recession well typically growth is good and typically the fed is raising rates as growth is good like we've seen from 04 to 07 and then once things get bad in the economy the fed cuts rates accommodates the markets well during this time around you're in a really weird dilemma where interest rates are so low, the markets are so sensitive to raising rates. Look at what has happened in the stock market. Look what's happening in the mortgage market. And we're only getting started raising rates. So you have this market fed dilemma that's, that's really, really bad. At the same time where rates are low, growth is slowing down substantially faster than anyone had projected and then at the same time, you have very high inflation. So all of these factors are you know, like a perfect storm for a multi-year downtrend in the markets. I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case. And I think this will really be a stock picker kind of, uh, call it decade here. I, I think certain stocks are going to do better than other stocks. 
and that's obviously why we invest so heavily in SoFi. I think SoFi will do very, very well. But nonetheless, those are the issues we see in the overall economy right now that's really affecting investor sentiment. Now, the big catalyst for tomorrow is going to be the ECB raising rates, and that will definitely affect our markets. Depending on what they do, if they actually raise rates or if they keep rates at zero, could obviously be very bullish or very bearish. Uh, for our markets and we will probably react to that uh, coming in the morning now on Friday and really what the markets are going to pay attention to after the ECB news tomorrow is going to be anticipation of the CPI report that is coming out on Friday that CPI report comes out at 730 in the morning the core inflation rate year over year as well as the just normal CPI uh, inflation rate year over year comes out 730 in the morning 9 a.m. in the morning you get Michigan consumer sentiment survey and that's very important for the overall consumer sentiment around inflation around the economy so on and so forth i think that goes without saying that is very important as well so those are the big things we really have to contend with and that's what is really just affecting the overall economy and investor sentiment now at the same time we're seeing a lot of uh, put activity on SoFi stock. If we take a look at the option chain, we can see a lot of July 15th puts that are coming through. $4 million order right there, $10 million order right there, $4 million order right there, seven. $753,000 order right there, $300,000 order right there, $300,000 order right there, $2.44 million order right there, $3.16 million, $3.16 million, $4 million, right? You guys get the idea. Lots of put activity. All of those numbers I just mentioned, that was all put activity. None of that was call activity, right? But what you're seeing with the 13F filings still that are coming out are that, you know, these firms are buying millions and millions of shares. So it's not really a surprise to me that you're seeing a lot of short-term and long-term put positions longer term long longer term not long term but longer term put positions that are being initiated on SoFi stock and and, and that's really to protect against any downside uh, potential risk and these puts are being placed very close to the money with very low break even so essentially what happens uh you know when when puts are placed with such a low break even it's kind of like a reverse gamma squeeze right that those puts help to drive down the price of the stock just like when when calls start to go into the money that helps to drive up the price of that security so that's essentially what is happening uh, i don't see a lot of actual uh shorts taking on new short positions if anything this looks more on the bullish side the free flow out on loan has decreased by about eight percent eight point twenty eight percent to be more specific over the last seven days so that is overall a positive thing for the short interest for the actual shorts uh that that are obviously not initiating new positions at the current moment uh, the short interest of free float sitting at 17.26%. Uh, the current shares that are sold short of 125.59 million. Cost bar max at almost 6%. 100% utilization. Shares out on loan 195.92 million. Um, so looking pretty good as far as that is concerned. Not really seeing any of that uh, excess bearish activity from the short side of things. But the puts, that's definitely ultra, ultra bearish now as far as the technical analysis i do just think we're going to ping pong in between five and seven dollars per share i don't expect anything too crazy the volume has really dropped off a cliff as of recently so the fact that sofi has not really dropped off a cliff in share price is definitely a great thing in my personal opinion but that's really just what i expect i don't think we can break out past the 50-day moving average until we see the bond rates come down or potentially the price of oil coming down which is going to all come down to geopolitical factors uh and you you know the bond rates that's really going off of inflation expectations as well as what the fed is projecting to do if the fed slows down in september or potentially u-turns that's going to be very bullish for sofi but either way it goes i think the student loans going back into effect that will need to be repaid in 2023 is going to be the single biggest bullish catalyst for sofi stock that we have ever seen uh so far right but all in all macd just went bearish the rsi is at 45 so slightly under that neutral level of 50 so, uh, so also looking pretty bearish as of right there but overall i'm long-term bullish on sofi stock as you can see even anthony noto he did just buy a brand new position in sofi stock as of june 6th so what was that on monday he bought 21.75 thousand more shares worth 150 thousand dollars and this is different from the 10 b51 plan where essentially they're just scheduled to give him stock for you know stock based compensation or just his regularly scheduled uh buys that are going through these are open market buys so these are a little bit different and uh, a lot more bullish the last thing you want to see are insider selling stock the best thing you want to see 
especially you know when a stock is going down like this is you know the insider spending millions of dollars buying more stocks so definitely all around a great thing to see that is going to be all for this video that is what you guys need to know if you guys found value out of this video hit the like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section get your free stock with weeble mumu and public thank you guys for tuning in and i will see you in the next one